Mark Drexel is our liaison to the Builders Institute, Building and Realty Institute Board of Trustees. He's been very, very helpful to us in previous years and, of course, this year and all years in helping our industry with any problems or situations they might have. Mark is the Department Manager of the Engineering and Planning Central Support Operations Division of Con Edison. As I said, he has served as Con Edison's liaison to the Board of Trustees of the BI BRI since 2009. He has consistently and productively assisted our members with a series of procedures and responses to their respective energy concerns and problems. As you all know, Con Edison is a regulated utility which provides electric service for most of New York City as well as most of Westchester County. At this point, we'll turn the program over to Mark, who will moderate the panel presentation. Please join me in thanking and welcoming Mark Drexel. Thanks. Good evening, folks. Uh, thank you for having us. Uh, we're, we've, we've attended this uh, meeting um, over the years um, and uh, have gotten some really good feedback. And part of, part of the introduction indicated that I've been helpful in solving some of your problems. I don't want to do that anymore, right? So our purpose here is to try to help you understand how to make things work smoother. And the changes that we're making so that your customer experience will be improved. It doesn't help anybody for us to have stumbling blocks or miscommunications. It just doesn't help. So we as a corporation have taken a, uh, a turn for, for the, uh, towards the customer instead of towards reliability and those sorts of things. Um, and this is at the very highest level. We're reorganizing so that resources are available for new business or for changes to, to the services, both on, both on the gas and the uh, electric side. We have a new senior vice president in charge of gas. So there's, there is a, there's a sea change coming. And we're just going to give you some aspects of what is already out there or is right on the horizon. But you should see very quickly some changes in how you interact with Con Edison if, if you listen to the presentation, because there's a, there's a lot of information in here, and, there's a, and it's very easy. It's all internet-based, um, a lot of the information that, you, that we'll need from you, you folks. So there's, you know, how many people here know about Project Center? How many people here have heard about Project Center? Project Center is how, if you want to change your service or, or obtain a new service, you or your representative, plumber or electrician, files for that case. How many people know that you could go in and find out where the case is without having to make a phone call? Well, that's, that's the point here is to try to educate everybody who has an interest in, in the new cases. So what I'd like to do is uh, just introduce uh, my team. We have uh, Rich Brown, who's going to be speaking tonight. Uh, Charlie Leinhardt will be talking about some, uh, some gas stuff. And then uh, we have uh, St Steve Molina who will be talking about some of the internal applications that we're going to be uh, upgrading to make your life and our employees' life easier. And I have Bill Cook, who's the manager. Um, so he's here for, for our moral support. Uh, and, he, and he's been to these meetings uh, you know, 20 years ago or so. So he's been here with Salzman, if you remember him. Uh, so he came with them. So we're going to talk about the Project Center. We're going to talk about the uh, guidelines to electric and gas installation. Uh, talk a little bit about a uh, gas leak map that we have now. You can figure out where, where the leaks are currently uh, in your neighborhood or, or near your, uh, your facilities. And then we're going to talk about our, our application of customer project management uh, system. And before we get started, I just want to give the podium one minute to our energy efficiency representative here, Mike Gilbert. And, and he's going to want to speak to you guys later in, in your, in your uh, later meetings and really bring his team in to talk about it. But I'd like to wet your whistle in terms of how we can save your money and how we can, we can improve the, uh, the environment. So, Mike. Mark, thanks very much for the intro and for giving me one minute. Uh, these are the guys who actually really get stuff done. 
in the company, and I'm actually I'm, I'm looking forward to their presentation. I'm relatively new to the company. Before this, I was the energy manager at Pitney Bowes for nine years. Uh, my job there was to find energy efficiency projects, was number one. And number two was to find other people's money uh, to implement those projects. So now I'm on the utility side, and my job at the utility is really twofold. It is to maximize the amount of energy savings that our trust customers can achieve. And in order to do that, we've got $220 million to get back out into the market. So I'm in the business of trying to find ways to reduce energy use and to maximize the amount of money we can give customers towards that goal and to minimize customers' out-of-pocket expense for those improvements. So real briefly, they're probably the types of things you're going to be doing at your facilities anyway. You're going to be upgrading lights, motors, elevators, control systems, uh, building management systems, refrigeration, uh, processes if you're in an industrial environment, if you're in a hospital, uh, anything that's consuming gas or electricity. All of these things, we have a lot of money right now, particularly right now, to help you fund that. This program uh, expires in June 2016. And just in terms of a point of reference, the incentives we have available now for, well, I don't, the next presentation will be in more detail, but they double and in some case, cases quadruple the amount of money that we can give towards those types of energy efficiency measures. In our world in Con Ed, the commercial industrial is defined as 110 kW or above, or 75 units, uh, residential units or above. Having said that, we have programs for everything, residential, small business, multifamily, and, and of course commercial and industrial. So I assume the, the properties and the buildings that you're managing or involved with fit in one of those categories. So please see me either tonight, if you have any opportunities, or uh, hopefully we'll get on the agenda within the next month and get into more detail about all these programs. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, folks, I'm going to let um, Rich come up and uh, start, the, start the program. Here's the, uh, the magic wand. Thanks, Mark. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, as Mark mentioned, my name is Richard Brown. And tonight I'll be talking to you about the Customer Project Management Center. Uh, so I'm sorry, the Project Center. And as Mark just mentioned but bef before, uh, the Project Center is the application that your contractor uses to submit work requests. And we think this is important to you. I'm sorry. So again, I'm here to speak to you about the project center. And Mark, as Mark mentioned before, the project center is the application that the website that your contractor uses to submit work requests to Con Edison. And we believe uh, the information we provide you with tonight is important because every time we provide this info, the feedback is always the same. I wish I'd known about this before. I could have saved a lot of time and money if I had this information before. So tonight, uh, I will be focusing specifically on the benefits of the project center to you as a customer, the benefits to the contractor, and of course, the benefits to all our users in general. And then I'll close out by just speaking to you about how to get registered. And at the end, we're gonna ask for your feedback. I think uh, we're gonna send a survey to Albert, which is gonna uh, further distribute it to you later on. <clears throat> so just to give you an idea, the, on the, again, the project center is the application where the work request is submitted to Con Edison. Your contractor would write, about, uh, based on your request, a load letter submitted to us in the project center. Con Ed would walk it through the life cycle of the project. Currently, we manage anywhere from 50 to 60,000 jobs per year. In Westchester here, it represents approximately, I think you guys are doing somewhere in the region of 10 to 12,000 cases per year we get from you. Uh, in terms of users, we currently have approximately 30,000 users registered in the project center, and a third of the users have identified themselves as customers. And that number is growing. And that's important to us because it's telling us that the, your customers want to be involved in your project. A lot of time when we get, one of the most frequent feedback we get is that uh, we're not getting enough information from Con Ed. 
in terms of what's going on in our project. And that's absolutely true. Now, the reason why you're not being informed a lot of time is because we don't know how to contact you. When a load, load letter or work request is submitted on your behalf by your contractor, it's important for that person to provide us with your contact info. And that's going to be one of my most important lines for the night. We need your info. So implore, uh, I implore you to have your contractor provide us with their contact info when the work request is submitted. Right, so by having uh, that info, it's gonna give us that ability to share with you all the information that we have going back and forth between the contractors and Con Edison. Now, by having your info, you will be able to access the information, as Mark mentioned before, to a project center. Project Center offer you a lot of uh, data which can be very useful throughout the life cycle of the project. One, we provide you with a key milestone of the project. So once you, a load letter is submitted to us, a work request or load letter, we provide several, uh, five key high level milestones. One, when we receive that request, when Con Edison provide you with a ruling, as to how we're gonna serve you, do we need to install a transformer? Is it a simple overhead connection? We provide you with a ruling. The third milestone is when we do what's called a design. Our engineers would prepare a design. After that is completed, we move through construction, and then finally, we close out. So those are the high-level milestones we think it's important for you. So by moving to Project Set, by uh, having access to the Project Center, you will be able to see those key milestones as it progress through the life cycle of the job. So not only will you be able to see those key milestones, you will be able to see what documents are submitted by the contractor. So frequently, uh, there's a back and forth between Con Edison and the customer saying, the, my contractor is telling me that uh, Con Edison is holding up my project. And when you call Con Edison, you're hearing that it will return the contractor. Now, with you having this information and the access to Project Center, this information at your fingertip, you can easily see what's going on on your project. You can easily track your project. So again, what's key, the first step is for us to know who you are by having your contractor provide us with your contact info. When the work request is submitted or the load letter, have them provide us with your contact info. Not only will you be able to see the key milestone, but you will be able to, if there's multiple projects going on for your organization, you will be able to see all the projects in one view. And I'll move on to a screenshot a, a little bit later on so you can see what that looks like. So all you, with one user login ID, you can see all your projects. Whether it's uh, oil to gas conversion, uh, new construction, renovation, remodeling, all the projects will be listed in just one simple view. And again, it's much easier, armed with that information, to hold your contractors accountable. Uh, we have had projects where it's uh, projects are on hold for anywhere from three to six months because of pending submission from the contractor. So with that, uh, by you having access to the project center, you will easily tell what documents, is awaiting your contractor to, to be submitted and what we have at Con Edison. So again, by you having that view, you can see your delays and you're able to now mitigate and expedite whatever it is that's causing your project to be in whole. For the contractors, it's uh, also their day-to-day -day portal that they use to submit these work requests. They can submit a work request. They used to submit uh, other documents, such as the final inspection, final checklist. Whatever documents that we need to move the process along, the contractors would use this as their day-to-day -day portal. They can contact the rep directly from the website. And also, we're looking, as Mark mentioned, to invest in this website, make a lot of improvement as we move forward. So what we're going to encourage you to do when you do get a chance to log into this website, we're going to ask you for your feedback. And again, that's going to be important because we're going to try to exceed your expectation in terms of 
what we provide here at the website for you. So again, there's a lot of benefit for both you and the contractor, but again, it requires that you ask your contractor to provide us with your contact info upfront when that load letter is submitted. So I've put together just a quick list of some of the, the common stuff that we find that's caused the, your projects to be delayed. And again, if you have access to Project Center, it's going to be so easy for you to identify these common causes of delay on, on projects. The first one is an incomplete load letter. So what, again, a load letter is simple, uh, a breakdown of all the loads, the outlets, the bulbs that you'll be using on your building. And if it's not completed properly, there's a back and forth between Con Edison and your architect or your contractor to provide the correct data. We have had buildings that work were submitted for a 50 store building, but the load is equivalent to that of a three story, of a, <laughs> of a three story building. So it's very important that your contractor provide us with a proper load letter. That's gonna to help to move the process along much easier. The second piece is the plot plan. Again, we need to know where the building is located where your electric room is going to be, that's important data for us to make a decision as to how we're going to provide a service to you. Uh, another big one is approvals. Whether it's from the city of White Plains, Yonkers, wherever you are, we need those approvals for the blue card, the city certificate, uh, the affidavits from your plumber, and we also need any certificate that's required for us to energize the service. We cannot move forward to energize the service unless we know it's safe for us to energize. So uh, these are some of the, the quick items that uh, can cause your projects to be delayed. But again, what's important here is for you to be involved in the communication process. If you're involved, it's easy for you to identify what's holding up your project so you can move the process along to get the service on time. Uh, what I have here is just a screenshot of the My Projects view. So if there's multiple projects that you have, when you log into this website, it will give you a list of all your projects uh, that was submitted by your contractor, but it's listed as you as the customer. Now you can drill down into each of these projects, and as I mentioned before, we have some key high-level milestone that walk you through the life cycle of the project. To your upper right there we have, when we receive the work request, that's green, showing that kind of we're good, we have completed that process. The next step is the service determination, followed by the when the design is complete, and the one that's in yellow or amber, depending on how you see it, uh, is saying that it's in progress. So those are the gray one, we've not reached that milestone as yet. But the idea is to give you a simple view to tell the story what's going on with your project. In addition, uh, the stuff at the bottom is the documents that were submitted by your contractor, the date we received them, and what's pending. So it's an easy way for you to tell what's going on with your project. It's going to save you a lot of time and money by having this information. So again, it requires, on your behalf, two simple process, two simple steps. One, to let the person submitting the load request put your contact info. And the second and the most important piece also is that you register. It's a one-time registration process. It's very simple. Uh, you'd go to conned.com. I think that's fairly easy to remember, right? Conned.com, in the upper right, we have what's called a quit links. You click on the billing and, uh, billing and remodeling. It takes you to this of the window where you have the launch project center and you register. But again, if you register and we do not have your contact info, you will not be able to see the details on the project. So the first step is that you ask the person submitting the load request or the load letter to input your contact info. The second step is that you register for the project center. Now, when you go there, Depending on your experience, if we're not exceeding your expectation, we're going to need your feedback. Because as Mark mentioned before, we're looking to improve. Our goal is to exceed your expectation. So we want to hear from you. What can we do to exceed your expectation? In the next couple of months, we're going to be making several changes to improve the customer experience. 
We're going to be reaching out to the contractors, to the plumbers, the architects, all the association to gain their feedback to improve what we have on the project center. So please, we implore you to spend a few minutes just to register on the project center so we can communicate with you. Being in the loop is going to pay off big time. It's a small investment for a big payoff. So I do implore you this evening to sign up for the project center and get your contact put you on that case. Thank you. So that we can get through the program, if, if you can just be patient. Um, so so it, it's, it's really important that, uh, that we understand how this works. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't, tell us why, and we'll move it forward. So, so just to, to, to move this on, I want to introduce uh, Charlie Leinhardt, who's uh, he's got more guest experience than, than, than most in our company. Uh, so he can help you along with the with gas. Good evening, folks. Um, again, my name is Charlie Leinhardt. Um, I've been employed with Con Edison, primarily on the gas engineering side, since 1990. Um, I joined Mark's group roughly four years ago. Um, Mark has been instrumental in making a lot of the resources that are available to you um, more transparent or less transparent and available to you, the public. The agenda I'm going to cover tonight will speak to our customer guides to the gas and electric service installations. I'm going to cover the gas, the recently introduced gas leak map. And I'm also going to touch on the recent incident that we had in Manhattan related to gas back on March 27, 2015. And again, that primarily is in here just to talk about a heightened awareness on the gas side of the industry. So again, like Rich spoke to, a lot of this stuff, or the majority of this stuff, is all easily accessible. Um, it's all found on our coned.com resource page. First is our, our gas and electric service guides, um, both which I brought tonight. Um, there's copies up here on the table. I certainly would encourage all of you to take a copy. And they're primarily for our customers, architects, engineers, plumbing contractors, and city and building inspectors. And essentially it provides a means for you to essentially learn everything you need to know about how to get a service installed, whether it be gas and or electric. In 2013, we embarked on updating our gas yellow book. Some of the changes and highlights include a complete makeover from cover to cover. The content is presented more in line with our industry peers, uh, specifically Orange and Rockland. The ability to print and search the entire document by keyword so if you had an interest in knowing something about a valve, you can key in valve and it'll take you to essentially throughout the entire document. We added some new add-ons, um, most notably a frequently asked question section. We also added some IKEA-like step-by-step instructions. And we added a number of standard service layouts. Um, for example, if you needed a gas service to a single family residential home, it would essentially spell out what specifications you would refer to to get that accomplished. We added some new content, specifically oil to gas instructions on conversions and some information on how to add an emergency generator. And essentially it's a single document that assures for efficient updates, ensuring you as a customer always has the latest information available. And with such a success on the gas side, back in 2013 we embarked on a similar endeavor in 2014 on the electric side. Some of the changes and highlights for that guide is basically now it's a living document so it's continually changing so it's you know, encouraging to, to go back to the site every now and then to see if this updates. It's customer focused and process driven. We've obsoleted a lot of items that have been removed, stuff that was dated. Um, we added a lot more current technology to the guide. We updated the specification revisions and again, similar to the gas document, it's a single document that ensures for efficient updates, ensuring you as a customer always has the latest information available. And it's updated on a semi-annual basis, so twice a year we go, out, we go in and review it. We have a team of area SMEs throughout the company that we bring together. Um, in the interim, in the midst of changes, we send change bulletins out to the industry. 
We also have a revision log inside the document at the end so you can see what changes were made and when they were made. And it's also easy for us through what Rich had mentioned, Project Center, we can actually go in and if we have an update to the book, every licensed master plumber or every licensed electrician that's registered to our Project Center um, portal can get notification right away. You know, a single email we can, we can generate to everybody. And it makes, you know, conversations at trade meetings such as the one we're having tonight easy to talk about. And again, it's a customer resource. Also, for, you know, all of these, like Rich said, is all on the coned.com website. Um, this shows the links to both the yellow book and the blue book. So if you didn't have access to the hard copies you take tonight, it's also live online remotely. Con Edison just lost, launched a gas leak map, and honestly, it's the first of its kind in the nation. The map shows all outdoor gas leaks on streets that have been reported to Con Edison covering Manhattan, the Bronx, Westchester, and the parts of service territory for gas that we have in Queens, most notably the first ward and the third ward. And essentially, you, you go in by zip code, key in your zip code, and it'll bring up all the leaks related to that specific area. And the leaks are coded by type. It's updated every 24 hours, and this slide shows you the symbology that's associated with the map. So a blue dot on the map is a type one or type two leak. And these leaks are inspected, made safe, monitored frequently, and repaired as quickly as possible. The leaks that are typed in green are what we consider type three leaks. These don't present a, a safety hazard to the public, and they're inspected at least once every year. And what I did with tonight's agenda, being that we were going to be here, I took a snapshot of where we are tonight at the plaza and essentially typed in the zip code, and this gave us the leaks that were associated within this general area. And those you see there in green. So these are type three leaks inspected once a year, not a danger to the public. Um, as a customer, you can actually take this a step further. When you're in the system online, you can go in and click on the dot, and it'll give you the leak history when it hit, how many times we surveilled it, the job number associated with it, and such. So it's a very nice tool. And just on the subject of leaks, we do a lot to keep New York safe. Um, just to give you an example, we received 40,000 gas odor calls in 2014. That's a lot of leak calls. Ironically enough, 30% of those were not gas leaks. So that's a customer smelling, you know, rotten eggs that his neighbors got in the refrigerator, <laughs> things as such. Not, not everything that necessarily smells like a leak ends up to be a leak. Um, but regardless, we have to go out and inspect the situation. 50% of those 40,000 leak calls ended up to be indoor gas leaks. In those instances, it's a leak associated with an appliance or piping associated after the point of demarcation. So it's a leak on the customer side of the pipe. In those instances, we turn off the gas to make the building safe and essentially tag it and refer the building owner to a plumber to, have to make the appropriate repair. 20% of those 40,000 actually were outdoor gas leaks. In those instances, we immediately make the area safe, we monitor the leak, and make repairs as necessary. Con Edison as a company has invested $600 million a year to maintain and upgrade our gas infrastructure. We scan our system 365 days a year to check for outdoor gas leaks. And we survey all 4,300 miles of our underground gas mains every month. And we replace more than 65 miles of gas main each year, on average. It amounts to a lot of work. I'm sure everyone in the room has heard about the most recent gas incident in Manhattan on March 27th. And the reason I just wanted to touch on this briefly, because a lot of the information isn't available yet, but essentially I wanted to give you an overview and just some of the positives we've seen come from such a sad incident on the uh, customer focus side. So just to give you an overview, essentially it was a building where the upper floors were recently renovated to create rental apartment space. NYU was close by, so we suspect that there was some apartments being put in to rent to, to the college level. 
Um, the existing gas service to the building, including the restaurant, was ruled inadequate. So when we received the job, essentially we said, the service that you have there isn't adequate for the additional apartments you want to add. That being said, we told the customer that they were going to require a new larger gas service to, indi to individually meter the apartments for both hot water and cooking end use. The, ex the existing gas service supplying the restaurant remained in service. There was a restaurant, the sushi restaurant, on the lower level, so that service remained. And some of the prelim preliminary findings, we installed a new gas service to the building that was to supply the four apartments above, but left the head of service valve often locked just inside the building wall, so we went no further. There was some continual work by the plumber that was being done internally. When we inspected it initially, back in August, it failed, and we found that there was improper piping found downstream of the restaurant gas meter. We subsequently scheduled an appointment for March 27th, the date of the incident, and at that time we found that there was some meter piping that was installed not to company specifications. We as, a, we as our energy services organization advised the plumber on how to correct the conditions. Unfortunately, Con Edison reps left the location, and as we all know, the gas leak and subsequent explosion happened shortly thereafter, essentially minutes. And ultimately, we determined that there was a diversion of service to the apartments above. Essentially, there was some uh, illegal piping past the meter that was supplying the apartments above through the winter. But I bring it up tonight because as a result of that incident, as an organization, we've seen a lot of heightened public awareness by you folk, the building owners, the building managers. They're essentially coming to us now regarding plumbing work, whether it's ongoing or you know future, and they're asking questions. They're asking the questions that essentially, what's the case number signed? Whether it be, they're, they're questioning their plumbers that are doing the work. Is there a case number? Have you followed the requirements of the gas yellow book, which we're going to hand you out tonight? Um, specifically, the, the, the yellow book says, anytime a curve valve needs to be operated, we as a company need to be notified. Anytime that a service head valve needs to be operated, regardless of the pressure, we need to be notified. And anytime a gas meter valve is being operated, we need, a we need to be notified. So to sum it up, basically, anytime there's work being done on your building, we should have been out there. You should see a presence of Con Edison. So if a plumber's doing work and you don't see us, question them. So we should be out there. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Steve. And again, I'll make these available. Anyone, you're free to come up and take a copy before we part. As we've seen come from such a sad incident on the uh, customer focus side. So just to give you an overview, essentially it was a building where the upper floors were recently renovated to create rental apartment space. NYU was close by, so we suspect that there was some apartments being put in to rent to, to the college level. Um, the existing gas service to the building, including the restaurant, was ruled inadequate. So when we received the job, essentially we said, the service that you have there isn't adequate for the additional apartments you want to add. That being said, we told the customer that they were going to require a new larger gas service to, indi to individually meter the apartments for both hot water and cooking end use. The, ex the existing gas service supplying the restaurant remained in service. There was a restaurant, the sushi restaurant, on the lower level, so that service remained. And some of the prelim preliminary findings, we installed a new gas service to the building that was to supply the four apartments above, but left the head of service valve often locked just inside the building wall, so we went no further. There was some continual work by the plumber that was being done internally. When we inspected it initially, back in August, it failed, and we found that there was improper piping found downstream of the restaurant gas meter. We subsequently scheduled an appointment for March 27th, the date of the incident, and at that time we found that there was some meter piping that was installed not to company specifications. We as, a, we as our energy services organization advised the plumber on how to correct the conditions. 
Unfortunately, Con Edison reps left the location, and as we all know, the gas leak and subsequent explosions happened shortly thereafter, essentially minutes. And ultimately, we determined that there was a diversion of service to the apartments above. Essentially, there was some uh, illegal piping past the meter that was supplying the apartments above through the winter. But I bring it up tonight because as a result of that incident, as an organization, we've seen a lot of heightened public awareness by you folk. Uh, the building owners, the building managers, they're essentially coming to us now regarding plumbing work, whether it's ongoing or you know future, and they're asking questions. They're asking the questions that essentially, what's the case number signed? Whether it be, they're, they're questioning their plumbers that are doing the work. Is there a case number? Have you followed the requirements of the gas yellow book, which we're gonna hand you out tonight? Um, specifically, the, the, the yellow book says Anytime a curve valve needs to be operated, we as a company need to be notified. Anytime that a service head valve needs to be operated, regardless of the pressure, we need to be notified. And anytime a gas meter valve is being operated, we need, a we need to be notified. So to sum it up, basically anytime there's work being done on your building, we should have been out there, you should see a presence of Con Edison. So if a plumber's doing work and you don't see us, question them. So we should be out there. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Steve. And again, I'll make these available. Anyone, you're free to come up and take a copy before we part. Okay. All right, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Steve Malena. And I am a project leader at uh, Con Edison uh, for the Customer Project Enhancement System. And um, I'm going to go over, um, so Rich talked about the Project Center application, right? And I'm going to talk about the Customer Project Management System. So the two major components that allow Con Edison to process your work requests are the Project Center application, which Rich mentioned, and the Customer Project Management System which is an internal uh, software program that Con Edison uses to process all of your cases. And I'm going to go over uh, a summary of the Customer Project Enhancement System, which is an enhancement to the existing system that's going to integrate a number of customer-facing enhancements. Um, I'll go over the scope of each enhancement, and uh, then I'll go over uh, the current status of the project. So um, again, what is the Customer Project Management System? Um, it is an improvement of the existing system that's, um, that's looking to use and leverage existing technology in order to be able to empower our customers to be able to do more on their own. Ideally, we want to enable our customers to be able to execute transactions without having to really talk to someone, to give them the power to be able to have more control over their cases. And, um, and also, uh, we're going to look to use that technology to reduce the case cycle times, both by and um, by, by um, actions that we're going to be taking internally as well as uh, the enhancement system as well. And uh, there's five major enhancements that comprise this, uh, this project, one of which is electronic scheduling, telephony, mobility, analytics, and uh, knowledge management, which I'm going to go into further detail. Now first, there's an electronic scheduling enhancement. So. Current state now is that whenever your plumber, electrician, person who's managing your project on your end needs to have Con Edison come out to your site, whether it be for a scoping meeting, for an inspection, or whatever the case may be, typically they're making a phone call, they're sending an email. One of the enhancements that we're executing is an electronic scheduling enhancement, which will allow you to um, have self-scheduling uh, uh, functions and inspection uh, appointment uh, capabilities um, electronically. That would be through your mobile device, through your tablet device, and so forth. And also, internally within Con Edison, the electronic scheduling enhancement is going to allow us, internally in energy services, to be able to get on the calendars of the different construction and operation organizations actually execute the, uh, the work in providing new or additional services. Next is the uh, telephony enhancement. And uh, telephony is geared towards providing our customers with uh, some more self-service functions. So I'm sure all of you have had to call your bank before at some point, and you've put some information in, and then you get some automated information. 
Very similarly to that, we're going to do the same for our new business. So it's an telephony enhancement. Uh, you'd be able to put, dial in your case information, and you'd be able to get a status on your case. In addition to that, the uh, the, uh, the folks who are in energy services, who, ha who are the commercial service represent representatives, will also have a telephony uh, function on their on their screen, so that when the ca call is routed to them, they'll see the information in front of them. They'll know what you what uh, what you're calling about the case. Um, they'll be able to uh, provide you better information, and they'll also be able to capture important information about that call, which will be recorded in the system, which um, down the line will be, be able to give, give us uh, more metrics to know what our customers are calling about, more data science in, in order to be able to, uh, to drive our business. Third enhancement is uh, mobility. Now, we're looking to mobilize the customer project management system application that we have to our customers so that you can go into your case remotely via your smartphone, via your tablet. You'll be able to see the, the status of your case. You'll be able to upload attachments, um, very similar to what mentioned, uh, Rich, Rich had uh, mentioned with regards to um, updating your information, uh, submitting documentation, knowing where your case is in the process. That's all important, and now you're going to be able to do that via your mobile uh, device. Uh, another enhancement that we're looking to execute is the uh, analytics enhancement. Okay. Uh, analytics is an enhancement that we're going to be integrating in this project to be able to collect information from all these different enhancements to give us more information about how all these uh, cases are being progressed. And essentially, it's data science that's going to allow us to drive our business. And uh, last is a knowledge management enhancement, which is really geared more um, internally for Con Edison to uh, act as a, um, a parallel training um, function within the system so that the people that are working on these cases are commercial service rep representatives. They'll have easy access to information with regards to specifications, procedures, access to subject matter experts so that they can um, be able to get up to speed faster and be able to provide you with better customer service and good information. Now, where we are in the schedule, uh, we're currently in the planning period. So right now, we're finalizing our requirements for the project. We are conducting customer surveys. We're, doing fo we're uh, executing focus groups. We are taking on a change management initiative because in parallel with this, this is all fine and dandy, but if we don't get our internal construction and operations organizations in alignment with um, new business work and getting um, and having a, a more customer focused um, outlook, then it's, it's uh, for nothing. So that's what's going on right now. That'll be going on to the end of this year. We're looking to award the project to a software developer in the beginning of 2016. And we're looking to start the project uh, February of next year. And uh, we're looking to complete the project within phased out um, in parallel phases of the aforementioned phases by uh, January uh, 2018. All right, so that was, that was a lot of information in a very short time. So um, we know you have questions, so here they are. Go ahead. With regard to the gasoline maps, what are the implications for the property owner if there happens to be a leak unknown to the owner with respect of insurance? Uh, I'm not an insurance expert, but if you don't know about it, you can't be held liable. <coughs> As a general contractor, uh, what I heard is the uh, electrician, the plumber, the architect, but the general contractor doesn't seem to be included in the Con Edison equation. And my feedback would be that you need to include a screen uh, and notification to the general contractor because ultimately they are, they are who the owner has trusted with their project and we seem to be left out of the uh, process. So we're constantly 
um, pushing our electricians and our plumbers for information. Our owners are getting letters from Con Edison that say, hey, the smile still has happened. But as general contractors, we get nothing. And we're the ones that are ultimately responsible for the project. Yeah. So I, I just ask that you include the well, general actually, contractor. Well, actually, really, it's up to the whoever, whoever puts in the application is just not one address that goes in. They can put two, three. So you can be on there as either the customer or as a customer re representative. We like to make sure the customer's there so they always know what's going on. Keeps you honest, keeps the plumbers honest. But by all means, whoever's filing the case has to put all the contact information in and then you go in, you sign in, and then you're good. I think we're gonna start doing that going forward. Yeah. So I just wanna make sure, it's just, I didn't hear the word general contractor. Yep. Ultimately, we're the ones responsible for yep. constructing these complicated projects. And mm -hmm. we just don't seem to get information. We're always behind the eight ball. Maybe it's because we're not logging into the systems. And certainly we're gonna try yep. going forward. I just wanna make sure that, yep. you know, you have the capability. thinking that the, the general yep. contract is a critical part of the equation. Yeah, and Eric doesn't understand your letters that you, you send out. Um, We're working on that too. <laughs> and uh, so yeah. please just include the general Yeah, project. Eric, I would, I would take one of your current projects that you have on and I would go to the, whoever put it well, in and, and, and say, here, put my name in it and then you tell me whether it works or not. You have my number. You, yeah, know, yeah, you know where I am. I will. So yeah, I, I'd, I'd be interested in seeing how that works for you. Anyway, yeah. yep. Yeah. Yes, sir. Any more? Uh, yeah. By the way, I'm not just joking, but if you can say this is the question because it's a little hard to hear from the back. So. I'll repeat it. Okay, very good. Stan? Good. Either way. <laughs> no, Mark David from ServPro. Um, where would we be able to access, you gave us a lot of information today, thank you so much. Uh, all of this information online, to share it with our resources so that we can yep. spread this around the industry. It's important stuff. Yeah, so you want to know whether or not this, this presentation and the information will be available. I've already provided a PDF of this version to, um, to Albert, so he's going to be sending it out to the membership along with the survey that we, we mentioned earlier. What if, what if you're not yet a member, Albert? There's a slight fee for the, for the uh, it's, what, what is it, $365 a year? A yeah, buck a day. Yeah, buck a day, right. right. Annual membership. Thank you. Right. Uh, anything else? Any other, Any other queries? I, I, I compliments? Wait, 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 wait. Compliments for Con Ed? Well. <laughs> uh, I have to say that you know during the course of my years at the Builders Institute, uh, you know we've had many representatives of Con Ed uh, of, on a, as advisory to our board and, and as resources to us. And I have to say that uh, and there have been many good ones, but I have to say that Mark has been um, uh, arguably the most responsive and the most av available. Uh, to this industry and to the members of the Builders Institute. And uh, so I just want to thank you once again and your fine crew for uh, uh, your presentation. Mm -hmm. and thank you. Thank you. We'll uh, come back whenever you want us. So, uh, so listen, if, if you do have a problem, uh, we have uh, Mark's contact information. I have, does, cards, I have cards up here. He, and he has cards. Sorry. He does reply. And it, it, it's not one of those replies that takes uh, a year and a day. He does reply to you promptly. So, again, thank you very much. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, it's going to be a busy June. And we have one final general membership meeting in June. Uh, we're having um, a speaker, a noted speaker from the Levy Economic Institute, a noted economic institute from Mount Kisco, New York, of all places. And that will be the half year roundup, plus the rate guidelines meetings that we can use in year now. So thank you very much. Safe, I'm happy to be here.